Hello Anna Karmins. This is me Vignesh NP and I'm here to present the course on daily practice series for Gray on reading comprehension and this is the third day and I am hoping that you're having a good time in this course. Okay, so let's move on. So as always, that's an objective for today. The objective would be to solve just two questions just like yesterday solve two questions and it will be based on a single passage but this passage today will be slightly longer than yesterday's so that's how the, or that's what we should do today so the cheat sheet for today this is the thing you should remember today before going on to the passage first thing is don't try to remember every small detail when you read so when you read at the first time don't try to remember every small detail just give it a quick read okay you will re you will reread for questions that is that asks about specific details when question about specific details come then please reread don't just read it uh, read in detail when you read at the first time okay then the main thing is try to distinguish main ideas from supporting ideas or evidence this is very important try to distinguish the main ideas when you read itself when you read you will find that there are some main ideas in the passage and there are some ideas which support the main ideas please try to distinguish between them find the difference between them okay so i think we are ready to move to the passage for today that is the third passage of our course okay so let's read an age old and much studied paradox of human psychology is the profound disparity between knowledge of self and knowledge of others. Presumably, the mind with which we are all the most intimate, intimate, our own, would be the mind whose characteristics we would most accurately assess. And our own actions would be those we could most reliably predict. However, both conventional wisdom and empirical evidence suggest that at least in some domains, others do in fact know us better than we know ourselves. Studies in the last few decades have demonstrated that individuals are subject to distorted or fallacious thinking when they are asked to anticipate their own behavior relative to their peers, particular in situations that one believes to be reflective of one's moral or civic worth. Our predictions about others' behavior, on the other hand, tend to be quite accurate. In experiments in which subjects were asked to forecast whether they would, for example, betray a partner in a game, donate to a charity, or vote in an upcoming election, they consistently rated their own future behavior optimistically, while they presumed others were more likely to act less altruistically. When the subjects were then placed in the very situations about which they had made predictions, the actual choices correlated more precisely to the predictions made about them by a group of peers. In other, in other words, people seem to have deep insight into human nature when making observations about others, but when it comes to self-knowledge, they have significant blind spots, generally overestimating and misrepresenting their own agency and strength of character. When assessing certain traits, though, the self seems to have the advantage. Characteristics such as anxiety or self-criticism are expressed primarily within the privacy of our own minds and thus are difficult or impossible for others to observe. Because no social evaluation is at stake, we are better able to assess those characteristics with accuracy. Conversely, we also tend to underestimate the presence of these qualities in others. Okay. So, I think you would have got a gist or summary of what we are dealing with here. So, this, this is a passage on psychology, human psychology, actually the paradox of human psychology. Okay. So, yesterday we had learned about something about the Humboldt squid and something. This is more relatable thing. Okay. More logical thing for you to understand. And as always, ready to go. So, let's go to the first question. The primary purpose of this passage is to A. Present a hypothesis regarding the extent of an individual's free will and autonomy. 
B. Describe a controversy over conflicting outcomes in studies of the psychological paradox of self-awareness. C. Discuss the results of experiments that attempt to define the capacities and limits of an individual's awareness. And D. Provide an explanation for the paucity of charitable contributions. So, actually what the question asks is to summarize the passage. And this we have learned from the first class in itself to summarize the passage so i told you to summarize just give it a quick read as we have done right now so i have told you what this is about this is about psychology paradox of human psychology so just see the question and the options and try to understand which will be the right one so as always please take a pen and a notebook or a paper and write down the answer and your reason for it just pause the video right now just write down your answer and your reason for it and then check with the explanation the writing the reason is also very important uh, sometimes you get the answer right but you don't know why the an why answer was right okay it will help you in understanding more questions is it okay so let us move on to the explanation so actually the explanation is that in the final uh, last sentence of the first passage that is here However, both conventional wisdom and empirical evidence suggest that at least in some domains, others do in fact know us better than we know ourselves. You see that? This is the line that tells us the actual summary. You can get the summary of this passage just by, just by understanding this sentence. Others do in fact know us better than ourselves. So when you see the question, you will see, when you read the options, which one supports this line, okay? So the correct answer is actually option C. Here you see, discuss the results of experiment that define, that attempts to define the capacities and limits of an individual's awareness. Isn't that what we read for the last 2-3 minutes? Isn't it? It is discussing the results of experiment. They have talked about experiments uh, on defining how uh, they, uh, one's uh, perspective about others and oneself changes, right? That's what we talked about. So this is exactly the option we want. Discuss the results of experiment that attempt to define the capacities and limits of an individual's awareness, right? They're telling that we have blind spots when we assess ourselves. So this is the right answer. So why are the other options wrong? Just see for yourself. Option A. Present a hypothesis regarding the extent of an individual's free will and autonomy. Is that right? No. They never presented any hypothesis here. They are just given viewpoints. Okay. Passive provides no hypothesis about it. B. Describe a controversy over conflicting outcomes in studies of the psychological paradox of self-awareness. You can eliminate choice B because there are no controversies or invalid statements that are given in this passage. You can see in this passage there are no controversies. So things they have said that are right. No controversies. And D. Provide an explanation for the paucity of charitable contribu contribution. No. You can see in that, in this that, they are telling that people tend to, what do people tend to do? That is, people tend to do what they think uh, they actually have to do. People tend to think about themselves as they are greater than themselves. Okay, you can see here that they talk they talk about people overestimating and misrepresenting their own agency and strength of character, and they are talking about other things like when they experimented on donating to a charity and all, they consistently rated their own future behavior optimistically okay so that what that means is that pro they it does not provide an explanation for the positive of charitable things okay so that's the answer so the correct answer is choice c now moving on to question two which of the following can be inferred from the passage okay so the options are 
statistically speaking an aggregate of behavior uh, predictions by a large group is more likely to be accurate than a single prediction by an individual b there are evolutionary reasons behind individuals assumption that they are immune to psychological forces that apply to others and see research has shown that individuals predictions and assessment of their own behavior are influenced by the desire to be seen favorably by others so in this inference type of things now we have talked about how to summarize a thing in the last three classes this is a question where they are talking about inferring inferring from a passage inferring is different okay you have to understand the nuances here that is you have to understand the passage and then tell what are they inferring to what are they telling but it's not actually in the passage okay so are they telling that an aggregate of behavioral prediction is of large group is more likely to be accurate than a single prediction no there is no such thing given in the uh, passage there is no such thing given to the revolutionary reasons behind this is where the problem comes you know sometimes people tend to answer that b is the right answer it's because they keep their own knowledge in this and try to answer i have told you before to please don't answer using your own knowledge that is sometimes people may think yeah you, there are evolutionary reasons but is that given in the passage that's what is important always think is that given in the passage is that given in the passage and look in the passage is there any any line that is given that there is evolutionary reason for it answer is no they have not given it and is there something inferring to it no absolutely not so the answer is for sure third and this we have talked in the previous question too that individuals predictions and assessment of their own behavior are influenced by the desire to be seen favorably by others that is exactly what this passage talks about that people want them want others to see them more than what they are okay so that's the explanation you can see the detailed explanation in this slide okay so the correct option is choice c so i hope uh, it was a great lesson for you today and this and it comes the end of the third day okay i hope this course is doing good to you and if you have any problems at all in in the uh, course or the lesson section or in the presentation section or if you like the courses please remember to please rate and review or and recommend my courses and please comment if you have any problems at all in the in the courses okay or if you have having any problem with english speaking or english comprehension please try to comment on it uh, and i will try to suggest you things okay one person has done that before and i have given him the reply to so please try to do that okay so Thank you and have a good day.